So my beautiful HP 7970 uh, tape drive, which worked beautifully uh, during the Vintage Computer Festival. All two days of it, and when it came back, suddenly it refused to work. It won't load. Let's see, just trying. And I think this guy goes to the end and triggers a stop. So here it is in all its beauty. And let's try to figure out what's wrong. Okay, so let me try to press the load button over here if I can get it. Right, let's see what happens. And you can see, right, the uh, arm is going to the end and it's triggering an abort. Uh, I thought it could be either a problem with the real motors, one of them pulling too hard or being too loose, or the capstan motors. Uh, so I tried a series of experiments. Uh, and then uh, you know, disconnecting one after the other, uh, one of the three motors, and then the best result was when I disconnected the take-up motor. Um, and then, I can put you on the other side, and things went a lot better. So now, the, this real motor is disconnected when I press load. It doesn't run away anymore. And then the capstan down there, I don't know if you can see it move. This guy is turning. Now I no this is what is when it's not pulling so I cannot do enough. But it tells me the capstan is doing what it should be. Then this reel should pull but not too much. And eventually I reach the load point. It says load up here. My Capstan stops working and my reel blocks here, so that really points to the lower reel uh, being the problem here. So this takes me naturally to inspect the uh, real uh, control circuitry. Uh, and there is two identical ones, one for the supply reel, uh, which I assume is good, and one for the take-up reel, which I think is my problem child. And then we can step through it, right? It's a servo control loop. So by the way, the tension arm is this guy. So that's the, there is one on the, on the supply side, and there is one on the take-up side. And uh, the way it works is that this uh, motor is servoed, so it keeps the tension arm in the middle. So that's the whole uh, purpose of the uh, take up real servo circuit. And the loop starts with the uh, take up uh, tension arm position. There's a position sensor here. So that could have failed and could be as stupid as the it's an optical sensor so maybe the light is not working so that's what i check first then it goes to a preamp that amplifies the air signal so that could be dead and then it could go to power amp uh, with lots of power transistors uh, so uh, i probably actually one of the easiest thing to do is to check uh, any power transistor for for a short that's a common failure uh, and then it could be something in the feedback mechanism that's wrong. There is a little FET switch that switches between two different feedback mechanisms, so that could be dead. Uh, or there could be a power uh, voltage problem because the motor has, has two power levels, either 20 volts or 40 volts depending on the speed, and that could be stuck on the wrong speed. So I think those are the things to check. Okay, now that I have read the schematics, I have to try to find where things are on the tape. Uh, and this is easy to locate, that's the tension arm position sensor. And uh, it has a cable coming out of it so I can follow it up. It coils around, it comes back down here. And it hooks right here, so that's the entrance of the real control a servo, a PCB. And I su suspect it's kind of symmetric, there's the 
a bottom reel and a top reel and you can see all the power transistors for the amplifier there everywhere uh, but the first thing I want to see if it, my position sensor is working right and look at that I don't know if you can see it but uh, hallelujah uh, there are test points and not only there are test points they are labeled this is input uh, amplifier pre TP1 ground so that's going to be easy peasy thank you HP this is the time where they actually made things easy for the uh, repair people actually you can so see so I hooked myself up between ground and input and on the schematics uh, where is it you can see that input is straight the is the output of the position the position sensor and it gives me 2.16 volts and then I just wiggle my tension arm right here there you go, if I move it and observe and observe that nothing happens well, since the board is symmetric I can make easy comparison experiments so here's the uh, supply reel tension arm and that looks like 1.1 volt and the supply reel tension arm is all the way at the top so I can move it just the same and observe that's all the way at the top that's all the way at the bottom and this one works here uh, well that would be easy it looks like uh, this guy is not working as it should okay so I loosen the screw on this one and I I'm discovering just as you are. Oh, there is in a socket. Okay, well, that's the simplest of all PCBs. Lamp in a socket and detector. All right, well, let's turn it on, see if the lamp shines. Should be rather easy. Do you see a lamp shining? I do not. All right. I checked it, bad lamp, so it goes into the bad vintage components box. So just for kicks, I unmounted the other sensor, the one for the supply reel, to get have an idea of how bright that light shines. And here you see it. And the insert is not very bright, so they turn it all the way down so it would last for a long, long time. I replaced bed lamp with a good one, and I'm looking at the resistor of the photoresistor, because that's a photoresistor. That's exactly what it is. If I turn it on, 12 volts, 100 milliamps, about what I find I observe. So here we go. Protect it from light here. So it's 16K with the light on and a whole lot when the light is off. 16K. So if I wanted to uh, find an equivalent LED, um, I have to find one that gives me about the same range. And I bet you uh, this is sensitive to infrared, so it might not be as easy as it looks. I might have to go for a deep red or a, an infrared LED to get there. So, quick experiment here. I have a, a red LED, um, which I hope has enough uh, infrared in it. All right, uh, so it's barely biased. It's with 1.8 volts here, so it's barely above threshold. Let's see if I can detect it at least. Yes, I can. It's going to 0.3. Oh, okay. So I might be able to replace my bulb with an LED. So I didn't have a lower brightness. Uh, a uh, red LED, but I, I had a yellow one and just for kicks I put it in and I expect it to be way less efficient and it is. 
very controllable it's 10 milliamp in the LED it's not shining too bright so maybe I put the, the yellow there and be merry all right as the final hack and I, I left all the mechanical the same if I would ever want to go back to a, a regular uh, incandescent light I can I just change the resistor here to work with my LED all right my hacked LED assembly is back in I put the original one with the uh, regular light bulb in and let's see if it loads I expect that was a problem so I just uh, re-threaded the tape and hope for the best one two three go and sure enough that was the problem okay well the whole big beast brought down by a light bulb And yeah, it works again. If I move forward, backwards, I can do more. And I can print from it. Alright, I'd like to get that repaired.